All right, um, how to do this video on what's the difference between a microprocessor and a microcontroller. And I need to make this video because I'm going to be doing some extra videos, additional videos on a particular um, device. And um, it can act both as a microcontroller and a microprocessor. So uh, I need to make it clear. So I'm going to do this video first. Um, so let's talk about a microprocessor. So Z80 is a very famous microprocessor. What is a microprocessor? Well, it's the kind of the um, brain of a computer, right? Um, I'll try to remember to put a link down below on a series of videos I did on me building my own CPU. It was a TTL uh, version of a CPU. Before there, was, there were microprocessors, um, you had mini computers, and mini computers had to create their own uh, processor. And so they built that all out of discrete logic. And then uh, microprocessors put it all onto one chip. So this is a microprocessor. And it basically has an address bus and a data bus. This has a 16-bit 16 16-bit address bus and an 8-bit data bus. And um, so you need to, it doesn't have any, any memory. So you need to add a memory chip. You need to have uh, chips, you know, this will tell you what, where in the chip, and this is the data that comes out. So you need to have different types of memory. You need to have memory that has the program space, memory, memory that has the, you know, scratch pad space. You need different types of memory. Some memory is non-volatile. Some memory is volatile. That means if you turn the power off, it still remembers its program. Sometimes it's all volatile. So every time you turn on the computer, you have to boot from a disk or something. Different types of memory. But basically, a microprocessor does not have any memory, does not have any I.O., you, know, you can't hook up a serial line to this thing. It, it does very, very little except for its microprocessor type things. You know, it can add and subtract and move things and compare things and things like that. Okay, that's a microprocessor. All right, but in a computer, you need to have more than just the smarts. You need to have other things as well. So in a typical Z80 system, uh, You'll have the Z80 CPU, this, this is the Z80, but then you had to add extra chips. You needed to have uh, EEPROM, so you, you, you put your program in over here, then you needed to have RAM, right? And then you needed to have maybe uh, parallel ports, and you added this chip. Uh, and then you needed serial, like RS-232 data, and then you had to add this chip, and then maybe you needed a clock and a counter and things like that, and you needed to add this chip, and then you needed a real-time clock, you needed, and then you needed to store this thing so when you turn the power up back on, you could remember some things you had done last time. You have an e squared prom. You need, you need a bunch of stuff in addition to the CPU, okay? So that's where microcontrollers came in, okay? So basically, uh, if you take about all that stuff, um, not the keyboard, not the display and stuff, but all of that stuff, and put it all onto one chip, just one chip, did all of that, that's a microcontroller, okay? So here's an example of a microcontroller. This is an ATtiny814 that I've been playing with lately. And so we can look around in there. Here's the CPU right there. Uh, but then we have RAMs there. We have EEPROM is there. We have it, we have Flash, which takes the place of, a, of an EEPROM. There, you can put your program there and run it in RAM. And then it has things like, uh, let's see, so it has like a serial port. Here's a serial port here. Here's an SPI port, another type of serial port. Here's a, a I squared C, another type of serial port. It's got parallel ports. Um, and it's got... Uh, digital analog conversion, analog the digital conversion. It's got a timer. Um, it's got a real time clock. It, it's got it's got everything in just one chip. Okay, and so that is a microcontroller. So a microcontroller puts everything in the kitchen sink inside the thing, and you don't need any external things. And CPUs are kind of like just the brains, and then you can kind of configure around it. So you can, it's a little more flexible, you can change things. Whereas uh, this is sort of like, this is what you get. So you got to choose the right part to have all the parts that you need. But uh, most of the time, uh, these are used to do embedded control. And uh, things like uh, this is made for as a general purpose computer. Um, and uh, so, 
uh, there you go. And then they got fancier. They had, this is an 8-bit. They went to 16-bit, 64-bits. You know, you can get it lots of bits these days inside the, the computers. They added uh, mathematical functions like multiplying and divide. And then they added all kinds of other things as well. So these, these systems are pretty clever these days. But anyway, that's the difference between a microprocessor and a microcontroller. And uh, we'll be taking a look at a particular type of microcontroller uh, next video.